Hey everyone, Chris Roman here, aka Roma Aquatics. Got some new wood for a new rack. Uh, there was a lot of requests to show pictures of it in the process, so I figured I'd just do another video. It's probably like the third video I'm doing on this, but each time's better. So uh, here we go. First thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, I already made the measurements. These are going to be the four for the legs. Four legs need to look like this, exactly the same. These little notches are things we cut out. And that basically makes room for the, the horizontal supports to go in for the rack. Um, if you don't understand now, you will in a second. Um, but there's, you can pause the video. I'm not going to read out the measurements as I go anymore. I'll read them once. Two and a half inches to six inches is your first cut. That is going to get cut away. And you'll understand what we mean as we keep going. The next shelf is going to be 22 and a half inches and 26 inches. Then 42 inches and 45 and a half inches, 61 and a half inches, and 65 inches. Um, my saw isn't the most powerful saw in the world. The last couple times this part gave me trouble. Uh, it kind of saws out. First thing I'm going to say is about the depth of the saw here. One and a half inches. It's, it's the exact um, uh, same depth as, the, as what a board is. So if you want to get, if your saw doesn't have a measurement on how depth, deep to get it, you basically can just set your guard for there. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out these clamps. notches. How important? Huh? How important the clamps? Oh, clamps. clamps yeah, clamps. explain it. Um, so basically the clamps, um, they keep it nice so you don't have to cut the wood each leg individually with relying perfectly just on your measurements. Now if you cut, you cut them all at the same time, you know even if your measurement's a little off, it's still gonna be level. And that's basically the point of clamping them all together. Um, it doesn't, like I said, it does make it a little more tricky to cut, especially with lower power saws, um, especially battery operated saws that you need batteries for. <laughs> Some of the plug-in ones have a little bit more power, but even these five volt ones seem to die. So I'm just gonna make the first cut here. <coughs> Safety glasses. Safety glasses are important. Uh, Rob, you wanna just hit pause on that while I look for me? One. We are back, Chris Roma, with my safety terminator glasses, because I couldn't climb my normal ones. But safety is most important. So what we're going to do here is these two lines, this is where we're going to have another 2x4 slide in here horizontally. So we want to get these two nice and straight, nice and level. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so now that we have these two main cuts down, that's going to be what um, we need to get actually get this piece of wood out. Um, and it's hard to make this cut here to make a cut and connect it right there. That would be hard. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to make multiple cuts across here. And it's going to just, these don't have to be straight. They can be crooked. But, I mean, obviously try to keep them as straight as possible, but it's not as important as these. All these are is to help get this hunk of wood out is what these are. <laughs> We have that. You grab a flathead screwdriver and you can notch these bad boys out. So basically just hit them in there, give them a little wiggle, a little wiggle, and then uh, just come right, come right out. You get these notches out just like so.
And basically, you get the gist. You just keep this up until you get all of it out. I'm gonna go ahead and notch out the rest of these four, and we'll be back. Sweet. Okay, so we got the notches cut. My boy Rob here. Shout out to Rob. He's doing it with my camera guy today. He Blue Shadow. Check out Blue Shadow. Uh, he's got his own channel going up. Uh, but anyways, back to the notches. We notched these all out. As you can see, it's not perfectly clean, but it doesn't need to be. Uh, the, obviously, the cleaner, the better. And if there's any bigger notches, try to get them out. Um, but anything that's sticking up here, like for example, there's a little notch, just like a little notch sticking up there. That's actually going to be a little bit higher than the one and a half. We or a little lower already than the one and a half we dug in, so we don't have to worry about it. The screws will, the screws will pull it up nice and tight together. Um, so the next step is right here. We mark these T for top. X is here, I mean this is the wasted wood from this segment, so we don't get confused the top and the bottom. Um, but this is our seven foot from here to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these off here, and these are gonna give us our uh, one foot segments that are gonna be for our uh, depth, cur depth coming over later. And then over here, these are our horizontal guys. And I'm going in here like so eventually see how that fits perfectly like that um, But we're gonna need to cut these to size and we decided that size is 55 inches for this particular rack It's gonna be different for you. I'm sure just like your shelf spacing might be a little different feel free to change these measurements to whatever Makes you happy. This is just what works for me um, boop, Trip over that so what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna Take these off. Zip these through here. What I'm going to do is because I want this cut to be exact. And I'm actually going to make sure I don't give myself some room. Don't cut off your finger. See, I left myself a hair there. That's so now I can come in and get it just exactly where I need. Give it a little hair. Push it down harder. And actually, that's uh, that's actually a good point. Um, it's always helpful to support. That's actually what this is for, to support it. But it's such a long piece. It's probably better like that, so that it's nice and straight. And as you can see how meticulous I'm being with this stuff, this is very important step because these legs need to be level. And that's our perfect cut. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that with these other four legs. We'll be right back. Go. We're back. Small, yellow, brown, Pepsi. Yes, and it's the choice of a new generation. But we're back. Um, so we got our, our legs here, shelves for the legs, our supports to connect the legs together depth wise, and our three inch premium exterior wood screws, hex head, they're my favorite. Uh, but basically that's, we're going to take this stuff downstairs and we're going to start to assemble the rack. Pretty much this should, all we need now is a drill and some screws and we should be good to go. We're back down in the basement, and uh, the plan of action here is we're going to screw these two legs directly to the legs in the other rack. And then we're going to build out, come across, and attach the other two legs to the studs up here. Um, and as we were setting this up, we realized that we're going to have to build the whole back first before we slide it in here, because we're not going to be able to get in here to screw the shelves into place. Uh, so we're going to have to screw these shelves in before we put it up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna build a, the shelf unit. I'm not going to do that on camera because there's not much room right here. 
and I'm thinking we're going to have to do it right here. But um, you'll show them when we get to the front? Exactly. I'll show you how I put it together when we get to the front section. All right, so we got the back section up here. Um, a few little things and tips and tricks I could teach you on the way. Um, this comes in handy. Uh, it's a square. Make sure if your shelves are nice and level here. We have a <laughs> clamp. Pull your wood together. And um, I guess this doesn't really matter how level these are as long yeah, as Yeah, that top one got pulled in it when you screwed in. it in. It got pulled in. So we're a little off. But, but the rest of them exactly, are. Exactly. It doesn't make as long as you have your shelves level. That's a big deal right there money and your horizontals exactly um while we're here we discovered mismeasurements this is why you measure twice you cut once uh we did not measure twice and now we have a little gap here that now i have to go back because i measured off by an inch and it's going to be every leg so i'm gonna have to go back cut an inch block and shove it in there and glue it into place but none of the rest have them not just the bottom legs so we just mismeasured on the bottom leg. But since the way we cut it all together, all the legs got it. All right. Screw so the this next in. step is we're going to, since we're attaching this, we're going to put a screw into here. Um, I guess I could do that. Yep. You got a screw right there in the chair. Like I said, these guys don't have to be money. It's the horizontal shelves that you, that you really want to worry about. What I did there is I just screwed it in, made this hole, and then I pulled it back out so now I could really grab this. If it was warped more, a lot of these boards are warped. Um, so, for example, the top board was warped a little up there. That's why it's a little off when we screwed it in. Um, that's why the clamps come into handy because you could hold up those really warped boards. You get to hold them together uh, while you're screwing. These aren't that bad, so I can do it with my hand. Uh, but now that we're pretty level, let's put another one here. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these side boards. And I'm gonna need Rob's help with me for this, so I'm just gonna explain what we're gonna do because Rob's gonna need to hold the leg in place while we're doing screws and stuff. Um, but this is gonna go in here. I'm gonna put one screw in, then we're gonna put the other leg up, put the other leg inside, put one screw in, put one screw in, um, actually, actually probably just do one screw. Then we'll have to grab one of those, just put it up to here, measure across to the other leg, decide where to put the other screw in, and we do one screw at a time in case any of these are off, we could easily redo it, and then um, we can the easily degrees. level this off with the 90 degrees and the level. Um, so we're gonna do that. We'll get one. Le we'll just get one leg and this piece put in, and we'll come back. Hi y'all. Oprah Winfrey here. You win. Um, you all win. You're all winners. Um, all right, we got it up with Rob's help. This is attached. This is nice and level. I can show you levels over there. Um, these are in. We got this tied down to the sport up here. And like I said, the way we did that was we put one screw in here, put this up. Rob grabbed this. Held it here. Put one screw on here into this support. Brought it over here. Put one screw here. Then use the level. Put the screw up here. Use the level. Put the other screw here. That was the process. So now the easy part is you just finish putting these in. You can do one by time. I'm just going to put them in so it looks pretty and they're out of my way. And they can fall on my toe, and this can irritate me that I just cut down here. Um, yeah, basically that's it. Put those on. Oh, the moment of truth. Looking fairly good. Looking fairly good. 
Looking really good. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, they're looking good. I'm happy with this. We only have two extra screws, and we're not even going to have two extra screws. So I'm going to put one in here. Put one in over here. Take your level. Yeah. You're 90. Yeah, not really worried about the 90, I'm more worried about level. It is pretty 90'd up anyway though. Now we take another level measurement. Make sure before we put the two screws in. Well, <laughs> now it's really cracked. Fix it a little bit. Uh, if you want to get a close in, close up, you can see it's not perfect. Um, but I'm happy with it. Perfection is very hard to achieve in basements with slanted floors graining towards uh, the sump pump. Also, when you're generally working with wood out of the out of the cheap scrap pile, and you gotta lay them on the floor in Home Depot, and everyone looks at you like, and you're like, "What? I'm just trying to get the straight ones." And you're there for like two hours picking out two by fours just to save some money, but it's worth it. If you look around, lots of racks, built a lot of them, and that's still not a single one perfect, including this one because of my mismeasurements. All right, we are done. We got the rack set up here. Everything's nice and level, back and forth, sideways, all good to go. Uh, solid, I can step on, uh, step on it. I don't feel any... Like if there was a space or something under the leg when I step on it, I don't feel it go down like at all. Um, all four legs are in solid contact with the floor. No, no side to side wiggle. I'm extremely happy with this uh, stand. Obviously, the mismeasured cuts. Uh, it is what it is. You just gotta live with it, move on. Uh, so I'm gonna go outside and find those little notches that we hammered and cut out of here. And I'm sure I could find a couple that will fit right in there. Just glue them back in we'll be good to go. Uh, but overall, I'm very happy with this stand. Um, next time you see it, it'll probably have a bunch of tanks on it. Uh, I'm not sure if I could get fit four or five 10 gallons across here yet. I'm thinking probably four with some spacing. Maybe five if I really screwed it. So this could potentially maybe hold 20, but probably 16 tanks in the future. Um, that's it. Roma Aquatics out. I mean, that's it for this one. Later, guys.